So when I got home, the TV was on and it was on to one of the Nickelodeon channels that he's always watching. I didn't notice his backpack not being there. There was a fishing pole at the house and it was Dylan's fishing pole. That fishing pole is never found. I did lay down and take a nap for probably no more than an hour. I started looking for him at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I contacted his friend that he had been texting the night before. They hadn't heard from him all day. So that's truly when it started to set in. Where's Dylan? I immediately went to the law enforcement people. While I was at the marshal's office, I contacted Elaine and asked her specifically had she heard from Dylan. That's where the fingers started getting pointed at me, right then and there. Like I had some involvement. Next thing you know, I'm getting a call from my divorce attorney who had been contacted by her attorney. Quite frankly, I find that just a little odd that the first person you contact is your divorce attorney. This is before we even truly knew that Dylan was missing. The sheriff's office people showed up here and they were canvassing the area and checking out a few places that he could possibly be. They took sweatpants, a Samsung cell phone, my iPod. People want to say that I'm behind it. I absolutely had nothing to do with Dylan's disappearance. Well, Dylan's mother, Elaine, says nothing her ex-husband, Mark, says adds up, and his explanations seem suspicious. When I found out Dylan was missing, my first gut reaction was Mark. Dylan texted me the night that he arrived where his dad lives and that was the last time I've heard from him, 7.06 p.m. He didn't like spending time up at his dad's cabin because it was so isolated. Monday the 19th, Mark texted me and asked me if I'd heard from Dylan. It was very disconcerting that I was six hours away and he's asking me that question. Apparently, when he got home at 11.30 and Dylan wasn't there, he decided to take a nap. Mark's facts are grossly incorrect about everything. I never spoke with a lawyer. I do believe Mark has something to do with Dylan's disappearance. I do believe he knows more. He's done everything other than look for Dylan. And, and that's what makes me suspicious. I have more concern over my lost dog than he has over his lost child. He wanted control over all of us. But the story that he's providing is not consistent with who Dylan is. Dylan absolutely did not run away. He had nothing to run away from. Dylan was a texter. It doesn't make sense that he stopped texting that night. If Dylan was just going out to see his friends that day, he wouldn't have taken all of his belongings. None of his belongings have been found. Mark talks about his backpack and a fishing pole. Dylan is not a big fisher person. He didn't even know how to thread his own line. Dylan was not watching Nickelodeon. And Dylan watched MTV. He doesn't know his kid well enough to make up a good lie. I believe Mark was the last person to see Dylan.